my obeisances to all the devotees who are assembled here today on our wonderful virtual Vrindavan journey. And I'd also like to offer my obeisances to all the senior devotees um, who have given me this opportunity to speak today. I hope I can say a few words that will resound with you. That's all I can hope for. <laughs> so I got this wonderful, wonderful topic called Who is Very Dear to Krishna? Who? Who is very dear to Krishna, right? And this is basically from uh, Bhagavad Gita chapter 12. And they are verses um, 13 to 20. They're about eight verses, right? And most of these, and these eight verses end with the word me priya, dear to me. So Krishna, in these last eight verses, he says me priya for many different qualities over there, right? Now, Chapter 12, when we look at the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 12 is also the last chapter in the um, Bhakti Yoga section, right? We have 18 chapters. The first six chapters are Karma Yoga. Then chapter 7 to 12 are Bhakti Yoga. And chapter 13 to 18 is Jnana Yoga. So chapter 12 is the end of the Bhakti Yoga. So it, he kind of, Krishna kind of, um, uh, ties a little bow. I mean, he, he wraps up chapter 12. He wraps up the Bhakti Yoga portion in chapter 12. So it starts off by Arjuna asking him, it's a short and very, very sweet chapter. Uh, it starts off by Arjuna asking him, Krishna, should I uh, go the impersonal way, go the Ashtanga Yoga way, you know, follow the principles and do all those wonderful things? Or should I just follow, um, should I pray to the personal feature of the Lord. And Krishna immediately says personal feature. Now he has already mentioned this already, right? In chapter 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, he's mentioned this over and over again. But here he's summarizing it, emphasizing it, the personal feature. And then the next section, he talks about the various things we can do as devotees. Of course, the one who is renounced and the one who thinks constantly of Krishna 24-7 is, um, you know, that's the best way to, devote, to, do, to do devotional service. But Krishna knows that um, uh, not all sannyasis are going to be following. There are many different, different devotees in different stages of life. So he gives us all an opportunity to serve him in different ways, you know. Um, renounce your work to me. If you can't renounce your work, then offer something to me. So there are many different options in section two. And then in section three, which is the last section, last eight verses, which is from 13 to 20, he talks about some characteristics which make the devotees dear to him, mepriya, right? And we'll look at, there are about, we'll see, there are about 31 odd um, traits or attributes which Krishna says, make him very happy if a devotee has that, right? But again, we are the bhakti, you know, we have, we've just refreshed our minds with bhakti yoga and all of us are very fresh and we are fully aware of everything that we have learned in the last six chapters of bhakti yoga. So immediately our brain goes back and he says, oh, excuse me, Krishna, in 929, you very clearly told us, you said, samoham sarva bhuteshu name dvesho stina priyaha Right? You very clearly said, I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I'm equal to all. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I'm also a friend to him. So now here's a, here's a problem now. On one hand, you're saying, I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. And on the other hand, you're, and you know, you're saying I'm equal to all, all living entities, whether they're human beings or devtas or trees or birds or dogs, you know, however many species we have, because Krishna is the father of all the living entities, the seed bearing father. So it's like on one hand, you're saying you're not partial to anyone. And yet on the other hand, you're saying that whoever renders service unto me, you're going, you, you, you're going to be a friend to him, right? Exactly like in chapter 12, he's saying, me priya. The last eight verses, he's saying, me priya. So it's almost like there's a kid in class and then who says, miss, 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 teacher, teacher, teacher. And, you know, always jumps up to, to wipe the blackboard and who runs, brings the apple to the teacher or, you know. So the, 
does the teacher now okay the teacher may like him and the teacher may be partial to him but is that fair to the other child who's an introvert who's very shy who would like to do all those things but because he's an introvert prefers to sit at the back of the class so there's a certain partiality there right and we feel how oh, krishna is not like that because krishna is not partial so now there's a conflict over here on one hand he's saying i'm not partial and on the other hand he's saying mepriya right and this is again one of the reasons why when we go through 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 scriptures we always need a guru we need acharyas to explain this to us you know we think oh i can pick up the bhagavad gita and i can read it i can google something i can watch a couple of videos and then that's what bhakti is all about somehow we always tend to feel that oh if i read about bhakti or you know if i just google it or if i video it i know what bhakti is all about this is what my parents taught me that i have to light a lamp and you know i have to write an agarbatti and i'm i'm a devotee and then on special occasions i offer you know make khir that's what devotee is all about and yeah 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 i know krishna is is like this and you know krishna is is a butter thief and krishna loves is a trickster i know all that stuff so but at the same time when we want our kids to or when we ourselves want to become a doctor or a lawyer we are looking to oh my goodness i don't want to go to this abc school i want to go to this this so this this school because this is in this it has these fantastic reviews and it's considered the top 400 or whatever oh i only want to go to this teacher because this teacher is considered such a great teacher and this so such a great professor and i'm only going to do my thesis through that professor so we want to do that for every other aspect in life you know whether we want to study or we want to buy a house we only we are only going to go to the best realtor we always get educated but when it comes to spirituality somehow we assume ah mane ne mujhe sab pata hai i know i know what it is to be a god loving person so here it clearly says this is a conflict right krishna is saying i'm not partial to any anyone and at the same time he's saying me priya so depending on what frame of mind we are in that day we're saying oh krishna is partial like that so you know what maybe i have to do more austerity maybe i have to fast without water on ekadashi then i'll become dear to him or then on the other hand you say ah you know what krishna is partial then maybe krishna is not my god maybe i need to find another god and then maybe we figure out oh demi god is also god so the, all these confusions happen yet at the same time we don't want to approach a spiritual master we don't we don't want take that formal application of learning about spirituality about learning about this immense vedic knowledge immense right we don't want to do that so in this particular slide right there we know we need to go to a spiritual master which krishna has already told us like 6 million times he told us in in the bhagavad gita you know approach a spiritual master approach a spiritual master so now here this conflict again the acharyas tell us right so this is how nicely the acharyas tell us the acharyas say at this particular relationship is called reciprocation it's not called partiality it's called reciprocation and here you see how fair krishna is because he says i'm impartial but i will reciprocate with you the way you want me to you see that you see how impartial krishna is he will reciprocate with us the way we want him to that choice is ours that little tiny minute independence that we have we decide how we want krishna to be with us right let's take the simple story of kamsa and devaki siblings right brother and sister let's assume they you know they have a lot of similarities being raised under uh, the same parental environment and being you know raised in the same palace and stuff like that assuming that they have to have some similarity kamsa what was his relationship kamsa kamsa had fear kamsa was always fearful of krishna and that was he hated krishna and he was fearful of krishna right he wanted to kill krishna and that is the way krishna reciprocated with him now does that mean krishna was being partial no krishna was reciprocating with kamsa the way kamsa was uh, aligning himself with krishna he was afraid of krishna he wanted to hurt krishna and eventually that's the relationship that krishna had with him it's not that krishna said oh kamsa you're a mean person and i'm coming to get you no if kamsa as a mean person had turned around to krishna and said krishna i want to love you and i want to change and i want to become a better person like the jagais and madai then krishna's reciprocation with kamsa would have also changed right so in the same way here we have devaki devaki and vasudev actually in their previous birth 
had done immense amount of austerity because they wanted Krishna as their child. So Krishna reciprocated by coming as their son in this lifetime of this. That's his reciprocation. Right? So again, now we think of, oh my goodness, Devaki, how did she get to be, get this Vatsalya Rasa? How did they get that? Is it because Krishna was partial to her? Yes, but Krishna was also reciprocating with her. It's what she wanted. Krishna fulfills all our desires, one way or the other. If it doesn't happen in this li lifetime, it is going to happen in the other lifetime. So we have our desires and the karma, which go hand in hand, and we go birth after birth after birth. So, you know, be really careful what you wish for. Like they say, be careful what you wish for. Because Krishna is listening, listening to it all and you are going to end up getting what you asked for. If not in this lifetime, then the next lifetime. So here, here we see Kamsa and Devaki, siblings, both having very, very different uh, attitudes toward Krishna. And Krishna reciprocating with them in the way that they want him to, in a way, right? So, so Devaki actually gets to be the mother of Krishna. Just imagine. And then, you know, they get to stay with him. And he comes after he leaves Rundavan Mathura, he comes to live in Dwarka. She gets to spend time with him in Dwarka. Right? That's how beautiful it is. Then, I want to talk a little bit about the other reciprocation, right? The reciprocation with Bhishma Dev. Now, Bhishma Dev is actually one of the Mahajans, right? We have 12 Mahajans and Bhishma Dev is one of the Mahajans. Bhishma Dev has two kinds of rasas. He has the uh, a Dasya rasa because he is always humble. He's always in a servitude manner to Krishna. Every time Krishna would come to the court, he would never behave like an older uncle um, or anything of that sort, you know. He was he would always, he was always in a Dasya ras, right? And Bhishma Dev followed the principles of dharma in the sense when his father, Shantanu, wanted to marry Satyavati and Satyavati. He, think about it, right? Bhishma is supposed to be the king of the Kurus. That entire dynasty, he was supposed to be the king. But he gave it all up. Giving it all up is one thing. But sticking to his word as a man of principle, the fact that he stuck to his word, that's what we have to talk about, right? And this is one of the attributes that Krishna talks about, one of the characteristics that makes a, de a devotee dear to him. Bhishma Dev stuck to his, his oath. Then one day what happened, um, uh, you, most of us know the story, all of us know the story, the beautiful, beautiful story. One day when they come back from battle, Duryodhana tells, um, uh, tells Bhishma that, uh, you know, you are very partial to, to the Pandavas, you're not fighting enough and the Pandavas, this battle is going to go on and eventually we're going to lose it because you're partial to, partial to, the, to the Pandavas. Now that offends Bhishma because he's such a man of principles. He has taken shelter of the Kauravas. He's lived in Dhritarashtra's palace. He's eaten food over there. So his um, allegiance lies with, with the Kauravas. So he knows he has to fight, despite the fact that he knows every single thing that they're doing is wrong, morally wrong. But as a man of principles, dharma-wise, he has to fight on the sides of the Kuru. So when Duryodhan told him that, he was very offended because that is not an honorable thing for him to say. And he's not been doing it. So he says, okay, take these five arrows, give them to me tomorrow morning, because with these five arrows, I'm going to kill the five Pandavas tomorrow. Right? So he gives it to Duryodhana and they each go to their rooms. Now, Krishna is aware of, of this conversation. And Krishna knows that since Bhishma Dev has taken this oath to kill the Pandavas, that's it. You know, it's going to be very, very tough for the, for, for the Pandavas to, to survive. But of course, Krishna has a trick up his sleeve. So he tells Arjuna, Arjuna, go to Duryodhan's camp right now and ask him for the five arrows. So Arjuna is like, what? But you know, he doesn't question Krishna too much. So he's like, okay, fine. So he goes. Now, this is how wars used to be fought in those days. You know, sunrise, they would go to, go to war. Sunset, that's it. The conch shell would blow and everybody would put their arms down, go to their, their places of rest and they would actually not socialize, but they would not even go behind their backs to kill anyone or shoot anyone. They wouldn't do things like that. So at sunset, when everybody had, had retired to their respective camps, Arjuna goes to, to Duryodhan's tent and Duryodhan welcomes him. He's saying, come, 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 Arjuna. And then he asks Arjuna, what would you like? And, you know, in a way he's sarcastic. He's like, ask me for anything. Do you want the kingdom? I can give you the kingdom. 
So Arjuna said, no, 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 I don't need your kingdom. But remember, you had offered me a boon many years ago. And that was another big story, one another big, beautiful story. So Duryodhan owed Arjuna a boon. So Arjuna says, I want to make use of that. So Duryodhan says, oh, okay, fine. What do you want? He says, give me the five arrows. So Duryodhan is perplexed and he's like, five arrows? <laughs> How do you know about the five arrows? And then he says, oh, Krishna told me. So he says, okay, Krishna told you. <laughs> so then Duryodhan, as a man of honor, again, he picks up the five arrows and he gives it to Arjuna. So Arjuna takes the five arrows and he goes back. Now, next day in the morning, uh, it's sunrise and they're getting ready to prepare for war. And Bhishma Dev then asks Duryodhan, he says, where are the five arrows that I gave you last night? So Duryodhan is like, oh, sorry, Arjuna came last night and he took it. And Bhishma Dev was furious because he knew there was only one person who had tricked Duryodhana into doing that and that was Krishna, right? Because how did Arjuna know that he gave him the five arrows? So Krishna, so Duryodhana, uh, Bhishma Dev was furious because he was like, you have made me break my vow. I made a vow to kill the, to kill the Pandavas today because it was a part of my honor that I was fighting for Duryodhan's side and I had to be honorable to Duryodhan's side. So you have made me break my promise. Krishna, I will make you break your promise today, right? And what was Krishna's vow? Krishna had made a vow that he would not participate in the war. That is why he became Partha Sarathi. He became the charioteer of Arjuna. But Bhishma says, I'm going to make you break your vow. And of course, we have this fantastic battle and, you know, the arrows flying and this and that and everything. And finally, Bhishma Dev breaks Arjuna's arrow. And then this most amazing, amazing picture in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna picks up the wheel of Arjuna's chariot and rushes at Bhishma Dev with it. So you see, this is such a thrilling picture, you know, when you see it's, Firstly, there's so much energy in it. It's it's this, you can feel the entire vibe of that anger, that fury. He had sweat coming down. Krishna had, they, they say that the sweat coming down Krishna's face was like this beautiful clouds that were falling over there. And Arjuna is trying to hold his back now. Arjuna is telling him, Krishna, no, you made a vow. But at that point, what is Krishna trying to do? Krishna is reciprocating with Bhishma. Because Bhishma was in the Virya Rasa at that time. We have five primary Rasas, right? We have five primary Rasas, which is um, Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya, which again is basically a silent relationship, a servitor relationship, a friendly relationship, a parental relationship and the conjugal relationship. Those are the five primary rasas and all of us have it. All of us have those, right? But there are seven secondary rasas. One is, you know, comic and one is fear and one is virya, which is courage and chivalry. Now, that is the relationship that, that is the rasa that Bhishma Dev had with Krishna, the virya rasa. And this is how Krishna was reciprocating with him. He didn't care if he broke his vow because for him, it was more important to satisfy his devotee, to reciprocate this devotee. So this is the beauty of it. This is Krishna's reciprocation. And this is how the Acharyas explain it to us when Krishna picks up the wheel and rushes at Bhishma because he, Krishna, had to keep the vow that Bhishma they've made. And what did Bhishma say? Bhishma said, Krishna, I will make you break your vow today. So you see that, you see, it's so beautifully intricate. It's so, so many layers and layers and layers of intricacy. But beneath it all, you see Krishna's love for his devotee. That's all, you know, he's reciprocating with the devotee the way we want him to reciprocate with us. So that is really, really important. Okay. Now, here, I would like you to either unmute yourself or whatever, right? So here's a picture. Here, here was a story of this old lady who had four grown sons. And, you know, these four grown sons, they each got married and they, of course, ran away with, not ran away with their wives. They, you know, they went to live their own lives or whatever. And no one bothered to care for their mother, right? So this poor old lady struggling. She was still going to the woods, picking up 
um, branches of wood and coming back and she was exhausted. And one day she was so exhausted that she just sat, so exhausted that everything fell from her head and she just sat over there and she was like, Krishna, she cried out, right? She cried out, Krishna. Now, you know, when in all the chanting that we do, there are some times of realize, oh my goodness, that's that, that absolutely offenseless chanting. So like that, she cried out, Krishna, she cried out. And lo and behold, Krishna appeared in front of her, right? Now, I would like for you to unmute yourself and just, you know, about four or five of you. I would like for you to think for one minute. Put yourself in the, sh in, in the shoes of this, this lady, this lady who went to pick wood, this lady who is advancing in age, this lady who's exhausted, and this lady who's calling out to Krishna because life has been so unfair to her. She has raised four sons. She's given them everything that she had and they have all left her and they've gone. And in this age, you know, she's, she's calling out to Krishna, Krishna. And Krishna comes in front of her. Now, I know all the devotees on this conference call are, are very, very advanced devotees. But for a minute, I want you to just put yourself in the shoes and tell me, what would you have asked when Krishna came in front of you at that particular moment? What would you have asked? Please, sir, this a little bit of interaction is always good, although it's on Zoom and I know um, it is, you know? Um, a bit of a st strength to uh, inner strength to deal with the situation because it, it's not going to change. So she may as well have, uh, again, inner strength to deal with her present situation. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. What else? Any other uh, suggestions? What was her conversation that she had with Krishna at that point? What do you think happened? Jen, putting yourself in your shoes, you know, what would you have said to Krishna? Hare Krishna. Hare Bol. Sometimes in life, when you're going through a lot of pain and suffering, and you just call out Krishna's name, you actually don't know what to ask him, you just take his name. That's it. Like, you come to a point where you just don't know what to ask him. That's it. You call out his name and leave it to him. And you think, okay, Mare Krishna Rakheke, Rakhe Krishna Mare. Wonderful. And Manini Radhika Mataji, I cannot tell you what a pleasure it is to see you. I am so, so, so happy to see you because, you know, we are no, no one is allowed to come to see you or whatever. I thank you so much for coming and for, for sharing your thought because, you know, you Hari telling bol. <laughs> means so much. Hari Bol Mataji, thank you so much. Just calling out his name and you're absolutely right. We don't know what to ask. We really don't know what to ask. So it's really nice to see you. So the other thing is... Um, uh, in the, so, but what, what actually happened in the story was the, the, what I, in the story is that there were so many things that we could ask right at that particular moment. We could say, oh, you know, just build me a huge palace over here and then have, give me servants so that I don't have to pick wood. You know, just give me all these woodcutters, let them all report into me. Let me become the, the landlord, the zamindar of this place, right? We could have asked for that. She could have asked for that. Or she could have said, make sure that all my children come back to me and they take care of me or then allow me to go and stay with each son uh, three, three months, you know, have four sons, one full year and my, you know, my Bahuranis take care of me and then press my feet and do all that, uh, you know, treat me like the big mother-in-law and whatever, Saas Bahu thing. She could have asked for anything, right? But in that moment, she's asking Krishna, she said, oh, Krishna, can you pick up this bundle of wood and put it back on my head? That's what she asked him. So Krishna picked up the bundle of wood, put it on her head, and that was it. Krishna disappeared and she walked home with the bundle of wood. So you see, this is... Now, whatever her circumstances, you know, that was the only thing that was in her mind. How am I going to get this wood home and how am I going to burn this to cook food? Whatever was in her mind at that particular time. But now, can we say that well, was Krishna mean and then, you know, he didn't, he, oh, he could have done this, he could have done that. No, he came there. That one second that she called out Krishna, she called out to him, he came there. And she said, put this bundle of wood back on my head so I can take it home. So the point is that 
when krishna says that if you develop these characters that that you know that we are going to go into in a few minutes it doesn't mean that um only if you do this i'm going to like you only if you do this no krishna is not like that he is he's impartial to absolutely everybody is totally impartial to everybody right then it's up to us it's up to us to read the scriptures it's up to us to look for guidance it's up to us to ask questions ask the whole bhagavad gita is questions shrimad bhagavatam 18000 is only about questions right so that's the whole thing so this is as it is about um reciprocation so like like shri prabhu pad says you know and shri prabhu pad said that his guru maharaj used to say he said you don't try to see krishna don't say okay i'm going to go to the himalayas and sit there for 6 months and do austerity and because i want to see krishna because i read that dhruva maharaj did that he stood on one leg and he was only 5 years old and he saw krishna no he said you act in such a way that krishna wants to see you krishna is going to say who is this person what is happening over here krishna wants to see you 7 billion people however many living species and he say krishna 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 i want to see you no you act in such a way act according to what he is telling you keep bhishma dev you know this is what the whole thing is we are never going to become a mahajan because there are 12 mahajans and all those spots are taken so we shouldn't think oh i should strive to be another mahajan that ain't happening basically so you know whoever you are we just have to be um we have to we, we have to come in krishna side so that we act we use bhishma dev as um we follow bhishma devs uh, we follow him right that's that's the whole thing we follow in his footsteps of of different people who inspire us so this is uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu's teachings that we don't strive to see krishna we work act in such a way that krishna wants to see us so so coming back to you know the last few verses of the bhagavad gita where see krishna says my my me priya who are the devotees who are, uh, who are dear to me right who are dear to me so there are about 31 qualities and out of those 31 qualities there is one primary or essential quality which is the swarupa lakshana and the remaining are, are the secondary and auxiliary qualities so the swarupa lakshana is basically devotional service unto the personal form of lord shri krishna devotional service devotional service devotional service bhakti yoga that is the swarupa lakshana and the tathastha lakshana are all the other qualities that we that will follow so it can be said that you know so by the by the mercy of guru and krishna we receive the seed of devotional service right the bhakti lata beech that is what we need they just planted in our heart okay the seed has been planted anywhere we go chanting when we have rath yatras and stuff like that the holy name is being spread the seed has been planted now in that person now we have to nurture the seed as well so we nurture the seed by doing shravanam kirtanam pada sevanam archanam we do all that right we do those different things basically even japa and chanting and hearing we develop the seed but beside that is called watering that's we are watering the seed of the creeper of devotion but however watering is not enough we need to fertilize the soil as well we need to make sure that is growing in a very fertile soil and that cult to the fertile soil is cultivating the vaishnava qualities okay they all go in hand so we in a way we can say oh but if i am doing devotional service then you know krishna should basically make me a vaishnava because what am i doing i'm waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning i'm putting tilak i'm doing this and i'm doing that and you know these things should inherently come into me but unfortunately it doesn't work like that we have to make the effort to develop these qualities we have to make the effort right and we'll see that they work both together it's not that you know so it works both ways sorry the word is walks it's not walks it's works both ways so we increase our devotional service and our vaishnava qualities will increase and by increasing our vaishnava qualities our devotional service will also increase so it's um i wish there was a positive way of saying catch 22 but it's a circle it's a beautiful circle you know one works very well with the other so devotional service can whitewash us you know we say ah oh, at last i'm like whitewashed i i you know follow the four regulative principles i have no alcohol in my body i don't have any substance in my body and okay i'm like all whitewashed and all that great but we are all work in progress all of us are work in progress we are all at different 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 steps stages on on our path to bhakti and without krishna's help then we become work in regress because today we are here 
we are in a scorn and we are like okay these are the four regulated principles i can and tomorrow we go to a remote place and you know we lose sangha we lose association we don't have wifi we don't listen to lectures and all of a sudden we are living in this place where drinking alcohol is the thing because if you don't drink alcohol then you're considered a non devotee so you see those kind of situations we can change and the only person who can help us is krishna from preventing us from regressing okay so once we do this it will make us very dear to krishna and that's why krishna says they are we are priya we'll be dear to him okay now we'll just quickly go through the verses and when we go through the verses i'll pick up a, 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 a an attribute or a, a characteristic here and then we'll talk about that right so uh, let me just check my time i keep telling stories i forget it's 8:16 ramchandra prabhu what is my time slot till 8:30 Yes, yes. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah. Take my time. Okay. So we'll go through some of the uh, the verses, and we'll just go through some of the characteristics, right? So this is verse twelve, um, chapter twelve, thirteen and fourteen. Advaishta sarva bhuta na maitra karuna eva cha nirmamo so you see, dear to me, dear to me. So let's read the translation. You know, if we were sitting over there, I would have you read, especially my dear friend Yogi, who I can sit over there, see smiling. My dear Yogi loves to read all these things that I put up on the screen. So Yogesh, very soon we shall be doing that. Translation. One who is not envious, but is a kind friend to all living entities, who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal in both happiness and distress, who is tolerant, always satisfied, self-controlled, and engaged in devotional service with determination, his mind and intelligence fixed on me, such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. Okay? Let's look at this. Advesta. Let's pick up Advesta. Non-envious. And not only is it non-envious, but it's Sarva Bhutana Maitra. That means he has to be friendly toward all living beings. Okay. So it's not that you can say, oh, I am non-envious. I am very happy where I am. I'm happy with my house. I'm happy with my car. I'm happy with my job. It doesn't matter if that person has a bigger house, bigger car, bigger job, bigger this. No. So immediately right there, you know, that's an issue because you're already doing that. You know? So not only do you have to be non-envious, but you have to be friendly towards all living beings. And how does that work? It works by first remembering that we are in this material world. Why? The first thing, the first attribute that brought us to this material world is because we were envious to Krishna. Think about it. We came to, we were all up there living in beautiful Goloka, and then it was our envy. We were a little envious of Krishna. That's the reason we came over here. So that itself should be, you know, a wake up call for us. Anytime we think, oh, how is it that that person got a promotion and I didn't get a promotion? You know, I, I put in seven hours, you know, nine hours a day as compared to that person who puts seven hours and 45 minutes a day, you know? So immediately that should stop us in our track and say, envy, that person deserves a promotion. Now, you know, it's Krishna meant for him to have the promotion and not for me to have the promotion. But not only that, Sarva Bhutanam, that is being friendly toward all living beings. So what, and what we in fact should be doing is that get up, go to that person and say, hey, congratulations. I am so happy that you got the promotion. And it's not supposed to be just a, uh, an exterior thing. Feel it. You know, hey, you know, you, you deserve the promotion. I'm so glad for you. And I'm so happy that you got the promotion. These are simple mundane things, you know, but the fact is that anytime we see uh there's so many things, you know, anything can make us envious, anything. And some, some things cannot. So we have to just watch ourselves. We have to be aware of ourselves, of all these characteristics. Because envy, you know, is, and there are lectures and lectures upon, I think I remember once in Tobacco, uh, I think I had to give a lecture on some of the issues that we had, you know, some, um, some traits that devotees should not have. And I think I finished one entire lecture only on this word envy because envy is causes us so much grief, so much grief, you know? 
envy toward uh, any small thing. Oh, why is that person singing better than me? Why is that person cooking better than me? Oh, in today's announcement, that person's name got announced. It's just some uh, things that pass through our mind and we have to watch ourselves. We have to watch ourselves. With this. Envy is one of the biggest, can be one of the biggest downfalls of, of uh, devotees, right? So not only do we just say, I'm not envious, but then we go over and above and be friendly to that particular person maybe that we are envious of. That will that'll be a great thing also, okay? So now there's a little story over here. So there was this little farmer who uh, every year he had the best winning crop, right? So then every year he would go to this, this agricultural fair and then he would get the, the best award for the best crops and stuff. So year after year, then one newspaper journalist went to him and he said, you know, hey, listen, I want I want to know the the secret of, of what is happening. You know, what is it that you're doing and why do you get the award all the year? And then the journalist was very, very surprised to know that this farmer actually takes seeds. You know, when he has these best crops, he takes the seeds from his best crops and he distributes it to all his neighbors and to all the other farmlands around him. Distributes free, of course, to whoever wants it. So the journalist was like very taken aback. He said, really? Seriously, why would you do that? I mean, wouldn't you want your neighbors to actually have bad crops? Because they're all coming in the same competition as you, right? And you've been winning for so many years. But if you distribute your good seeds, then maybe next year, the other farmer is going to get the award of, of the best uh, crop. So the farmer says that's not how it works. He's saying when the, the crops have germinated, when they're at that particular, that germination point, the wind blows and the pollen carries all over the place, okay? So if anyone has bad seeds around you, basically those bad seeds are going to come and destroy my crops. So it's better for me to take my seeds and to give them all so that all of us have good crops because that's how it works. It's such a simple thing, right? So when we have, when if we have something good and we share that with everyone, it's only going to multiply and it's only going to grow, right? A simple small story. So instead of being envious about the fact that, oh, I don't want to give my good seeds to this farmer because, you know, next day he's going to win the award. When you look at the bigger picture and you say, hey, you know what? This earth belongs to, to Mother Nature. Mother Nature needs to have good fertile crops. I need to take my good seeds and I need to distribute it. What is a silly award? You know, it's here today, gone tomorrow kind of a thing. So that's the kind of non-enviousness. So that's the kind of um, bigger perspective that we need to have right? We must remember that they're all parts and parcels of Krishna. They're all parts and parcels. What is my farmland against that guy's farmland? Eventually, all the farmland belong to Krishna. Who's the one who drew that boundary and said, this fence is mine. So everything under this fence belongs to me and that fence is yours. And now there's this boundary here. And so, you know, so we have to transcend that. And again, we can transcend that by reading scriptures and by listening to scriptures and listening to what our acharyas have to say. So, envy. So, 12.15. Yasma no dvijate loko loka no dvijate loka no dvijate chaya harsha marsha bhayo dvegair mukto yasa cha me priyaha. Translation. He by whom no one is put into difficulty and who's not disturbed by anyone, who's equipoised in happiness and distress, fear and anxiety is very dear to me. Okay. Not disturbed by anyone who's equipoised. Equipoised is a big word. Equipoised. So one may think that, hey, you know, I'm supposed to be not agitating people, right? There's a beautiful, beautiful verse in, uh, in chapter 17 about speech. And I had made a copy of that and I keep it stuck on my laptop screen because when I'm irritated, I can be really, uh, I can snap, you know, I, I can say snappy things to my colleagues at work and anybody. So I'm like, I keep that stuck there in bold because austerity of speech means speaking things that are pleasant, that you don't hurt anybody, right? So we have to be very careful of speech. So the question can be asked then, so do we agitate people when we go book distributing? Of course, here we have such a perfect scenario, Gopal Govan Prabhu. Can you imagine just going and offering a book to a cop and he's like, yes, 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 give me lots of books. So, you know, those kind of things uh, sometimes do happen in real life, but sometimes don't. A lot of people are like very irritated, you know, they're like, 
oh, please, you know, stop. And I'm like, no, I'm not interested. And, you know, I don't want to deal with religion and things like that. People are, so at that time, a question can be asked, are we agitating people, right? But then we have to think of the bigger picture because like, let's say for instance, there's a surgeon, right? A surgeon comes and he realizes that a, a patient needs surgery and he does the surgery. So we feel, oh, the surgeon is cutting up that patient. And then after the surgeon goes, then this, the doctor comes or the nurse comes and they give you know, the bitterest medicine and they, they sew up the person and stuff like that. So now the assistant doctor or the nurse, now we say, is that person doing the wrong thing? Are they agitating the patient? Because, you know, they are pricking all these needles and they're giving this, this terrible medication. And then we must realize that it's come from the surgeon who's the expert who's told them what to do. So similarly, we must remember that Krishna is the expert. He wants us to preach. And Srila Prabhupada has laid it for us to distribute books, you know, Book distribution is not just started with Srila Prabhupada. Book distribution is started from, from time immemorial, basically, you know. And for us, in our generation, you know, we know Bharti Vinod Thakur was sending books to America, right, from whatever many times. He was mailing books to, to colleges in the USA, right? So book distribution is because we've been instructed. So when we go to agitate people, when people do get agitated, we have to be very careful and very courteous. We say, oh, thank you. You don't want the book, it's fine. You know, when we go door to door and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean that we're actually agitating because there are instructions given to us by the expert out there, right? Then should we get agitated, all right? Now, so many things happen to us, right? I mean, in this Dekali yuga that we live in someone cuts you across the lane and you're agitated and there's road rage and you know we're making uh, expressions and you know using our decimals to show some signs and stuff like that should we get agitated but the thing is no of course we should not get agitated because krishna has clearly told us that if we if we are equipoised you know we are dear to him so we should not but then how do we how do we not get agitated then we try to think of the bigger picture and then we put this picture, look at this beautiful picture, you know, images play, uh, stay with us, right? So when you think, oh, we are just like puppets, we have three modes of material nature, right? Satya guna, Raja guna, Tamas. So these three modes of material nature are, so sometimes maybe that person has woken up late and he's not had his coffee and he's like rushing to work and he's cutting you and whatever the case is. So say, okay, maybe that's a Tamas guna at that time. Maybe that person is really a very nice person. You know, so this, when we imagine this picture, put this image and we say, oh, you know, we are all being played around by the three modes of material nature. Then we say, what is the point of getting agitated? Why? It's meant to be. What is the point of getting agitated? Why be in anxiety? Okay. The other image that we can think about is, you do, I'm sure you must have heard stories, read stories about Srila Prabhupada and the amount of anxiety he went through when building the Juhu temple. People gave him grief right? Jehu is prime property. People who live in Mumbai or even who, people who don't live in Mumbai, they know Jehu is absolute prime property. He managed to get that land at whatever the price was and people gave him hell after that. But do you think he like lost it and then did whatever nonsense he had to do? No, he was very firm in what he had to do, but he was calm. He wrote strong letters, but he could only do that because he was calm. Because if he was agitated, if he was angry, obviously the calm letter would not be a calm letter. The calm, the letter would actually be like arrows, which wouldn't help anybody. So these two images, you know, when we think of what does Srila Prabhupada do when he had all these agitating situations, he didn't go haywire and, and mad and, you know, behave like a crazy person. He was calm. He said, yes, this is what it is. And this is how I have to react. So when you're calm, you think about it and you react. Okay. So this is again, another, when you're equipoised, you know, certain things are happening. You know, he had to go through all the issues that he had to go through with Juhu, but being equipoised made him very dear to Krishna. I mean, not that that made him dear, but if we remain equipoised, that would make us very dear to Krishna, right? Then 12, 16. Anapeksha shuchir daksha uda sino gata vyata sarvarambha parityagi yo mad bhakta same priyaha. My devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities, who is pure, expert, without cares, free from all pains, and not striving for some result is very dear to me. Okay. Now, daksha is expert, right? Now, actually, I had a couple of stories over here, but I want to make them short so I don't go over my time. So Daksha is expert. 
Now, a devotee, Prabhupada used to say, a devotee of Krishna is, is, is skilled in many talents and at the same time he's expert in some talents. And even when I was writing this, you know, I, I one picture flashed into my mind. And again, to make this interactive, I want you, while I'm speaking about this, I want you to think about one such devotee who comes to your mind and put it in the chat box, you know, and maybe we'll read the list of the names that you come up as the names of devotees. The one person who came to me, and I'm going to call out your name, so please, you know, forgive me and don't get offended. I can only think of Padmodar Prabhu, right? Now, Padmodar Prabhu, to me, right at the beginning, he was just a Mridanga teacher for my for my children at that time. You know, wonderful devotee. He used to was to play the Mridanga, and he would he always had kids, and my kids absolutely loved Padma Prabhu because he would teach them and he would give them notes and whatever whatever the case was, right? Then I started seeing him behind the altar, so I'm like, oh, he's also a pujari. Okay, okay, great, or whatever the case is. Then one day, uh, Sandhya Aarti or something, they made him sing and he blew it. I'm like, oh my God, this <laughs> Prabhu is such a great singer, right? He sings so fantastically. And then again, one of those other days or whatever the case is, he was cooking lunch and his food, his paneer and his, oh my God, his Chinese fried rice. He's a fantastic cook. And then finally, when you know, I had the opportunity to go to the altar and start dressing, he is the, uh, the he was the head pujari at that time, right? How he teaches you, beautifully he teaches you. And Manini Radhika Mataji, she and I, we went together. He trained us together. And Manini Radhika Mataji, I really, really miss those days. You know, when the two of us went and we were struggling to dress Srinaji, and she's holding one feather on one hand, and I'm holding one pin on one other hand, and it was it was fantastic you know such beautiful days but he taught us with such love he would say would you like this to happen to you would you like this pin to poke you why why would you do this to Srinaji would you like Srinaji to get pricked over here and so amazing so you know these are some of the things that that Krishna also gives us he gives us these talents and at the same time it allows as being devotees we develop these skills as well you know, we learn to play the Bradanga, we learn to play the Kartal, we do this. So we, maybe we are mediocre in a lot of things, but we also become experts in something. And that's Krishna's mercy upon us. Right? That is really Krishna's mercy upon us. So now I want you to think for one second, if you can think of some devotee like that, you know, who just, who just dazzles your mind, put it into the chat box. You know, and I've, let's honor these devotees. They just inspire us to be better, inspire us to do better things. Right? So put that over there. Then I'm going to do 1217. I have to rush a little bit. So, yo na harshati na dveshti na sochati na kangshati shubha shubha parityagi bhakti manya same priya. One who neither rejoices nor grieves, who neither laments nor desires, and who renounces both auspicious and inauspicious things. Such a devotee is very dear to me. Okay. So, here, now look at this, right? One who neither rejoices nor grieves, who neither laments nor desires, right? So, so Krishna is telling us in 1217 that this kind of a devotee is, is very dear to me. But already in 2.2, he's already chastised Arjuna. When Arjuna at the end of chapter one puts his bow and arrow down and says that, you know, oh Krishna, I will not fight anymore. Immediately Krishna says, where have these impurities come upon you? Right there, he chastises him. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, Kutastva Kashmala Midam. Where do these impurities come upon you? So right there, you know, so we know that Arjuna grieving over there is, is not something that Krishna approves. He doesn't want him to, you know, he wants him to be equipoised again. That's the word. So that we've already seen. Then 12, 18 and 19. Samashatra cha mitre cha tatha manapa manayo. Translation, one who is equal to friends and enemies, who is equipoised in honor and dishonor, heat and cold, happiness and distress, fame and infamy, who is always free from contaminating association, always silent and satisfied with anything, who doesn't care for any residence, who's fixed in knowledge and who's engaged in devotional service. Such a person is very dear to me. 
Now, when we look at this, we are like, oh, but we didn't we already go through this? He, Krishna already said, right? Friends and enemies, equipoised, honor, heat, cold, happiness. He's saying it again over here. How many of us are parents over here? How many of us know, there you go. How many of us know that telling our child once one thing gets done immediately? Does it ever happen in our lifetimes? <laughs> Alkamataji, I can see you smiling. <laughs> Never, right? So look at us in our mundane lifestyles, mundane living that we live through. Tell your child one thing, it's absolutely never going to get done. Okay, then for those parents whose children do everything the first time, you know, it's a hari, hari bowl to you and Hare Krishna to your children. <laughs> never happens. So that is what Krishna is doing. Look at him. What a loving parent, what a loving father who keeps repeating this over. We may find some repetition, but it's just to emphasize the Bhagavad Gita. He keeps repeating so many things over and over again, knowing fully well that people like us are going to be reading this in Kali Yuga. People like us need a knock on the head over and over and over again for us to understand these things, right? This is the kind of a loving father we had. I had another quick story over here. You know, you many, many years ago, in my previous life, I almost want to say that, you know, when we used to travel to Delhi, we used to hang out and, you know, do all kinds of nonsense. And of course, Delhi was, you had, the life of Delhi was after 10 o'clock in the night, you know, when everything started, you know, all the parties and stuff like that. So I remember we had gone to one of those, Delhi had beautiful, beautiful clubs all over the place. So, you know, we used to go hang out at the clubs and stuff like that. And then obviously come home at two, three o'clock in the night. So two, three o'clock in the night, of course, now, there's no traffic on the road and, you know, the three people on the bike and, and all that stuff. So once we were, we were driving back after one of these wonderful, wonderful, glorious parties that we used to go to, uh, three o'clock or three o'clock or whatever. And of course, we happily, you know, skip the, whoever my friend was who was living in Delhi at that time, skip through the red light and we are happily sailing past it. I, I don't know how many, there were five, six people in that car or whatever. Okay, so now in Delhi, generally, red light means run and green light means, I don't even know what green light means. Green light means basically, you know, fly. So red means basically run. So he's happily gone through the red light. And at that strange time, an actual, actual cop came behind him, right? So the cop comes buzzing behind him. This guy has the courtesy to pull over and stop. And he rolls down the window. And the first thing the driver, my dear friend from Delhi, asks him, Tumko malum hai mein kaun hu? Okay, Tumko malum hai mein kaun hu? <laughs> obviously if the cop knew who he was he would like say oh bhagwan bhagwan okay no sorry i stopped you but obviously the cop doesn't know kon hu main then he's saying nahi mujhe nahi pata aap kon ho guy pulls out a card his father is some some cabinet ministry somewhere 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 the cases and the cop said oh acha ye aapke pita ji hai acha chalo chalo okay this is how it used to work so the idea is that basically He's my, my friend is fearless. He can just do what he wants, happy, anxiety free, because he knows nothing can stop him because he has this card, which is some community cabinet minister that his father is or whatever, happy, anxiety free, right? Just think of us for a minute. Who is our father? He's the most merciful, the most magnanimous, the richest, the most beautiful, the most generous, the most merciful. Why can't we remember that? Why can't we be fearless? That doesn't mean that we have to be stupid and skip red lights because here he's guiding us. He's saying, get these qualifications. Remember me as your father. That's all we need because fear is, is one thing that makes us do a lot of things. You know, fear makes us envious, right? When we, the reason I'm, I'm envious that the person got a promotion is because I'm feeling, oh my goodness, tomorrow he may take away my job. But here, if I'm equipoise and I'm, I'm like, oh, you know what? Krishna is my father. If I don't have a job today, it's fine. Because if he's feeding an elephant 50 kilos of food every day and he's feeding an ant five milligrams of food every day, I fall in between. I'm sure he'll have one dry roti or one sabji for me somewhere, right? So that fear, once we get rid of the fear and once we remember the reason for us to be fearless, all the other qualities can also kind of fall into place. Fearless then brings peace, brings serenity. I don't need that promotion. I don't need that car. I don't need that house. Right? So we must remember who our father is in that case. Now the last verse, um, 
Okay, I don't want to say this. You know, we do feel attraction towards saintly. Do you, have you noticed that you know when you when you see nice saintly calm people? And I remember Bhakti Charu Maharaj. You know, such a sweet smile on his face all the time. So sweet. He would speak so sweetly. Such beautiful, nice, sweet lectures he would get. All of us, you know, although we we all have different spiritual masters, all of us were attracted to Bhakti Charu Maharaj. And that is because we inherently have those qualities within us. All those qualities are within us. and we gravitate to someone who has that so all we need to remember is that it is within us we need to polish it we need to work on these verses and we need to practice why do we need why is it that why is it that you know we get okay we get attracted because we have these virtues but how do we bring these virtues to the fore by practice makes perfect practice makes perfect there's not two ways about it anything you want to do in life in our life you want to be a tennis player you want to be a basketball player you want to be an mba the financial whiz the ceo the ceo practice 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 makes perfect why is it that we can't do that in our spiritual life practice 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 japa what do they say about japa they know the mind is going to wander so what do our acharyas tell us continue with the japa because practice is what is going to make us perfect so practice is very very important okay so that is what we must remember and then like lord krishna says by practice and by detachment that is 6.35 in bhagavad gita and the last verse if you remember who our father is you know it brings us peace and serenity the last verse yetu dharma amritam idam yathoktam paryupasate shraddha dhana mat barma bhaktas te tive bhaktas te tive me priya very important bhaktas te tive me priya translation those who follow this imperishable path of devotional service and who completely engage themselves with faith making me the supreme goal are very very dear to me okay very important verse look at this the synonyms te is they ativa is very very to me dear krishna doesn't say they are dear to me krishna doesn't say they are very dear to me krishna says they are very very dear to me does that make sense to us does that just give us goosebumps that if you do this we become very very dear to krishna this is goosebumps that he's laid it out there for us on a silver platter with a spoon right there it's all laid out for us he's telling us that it needs practice he's telling us how to do this he's giving us examples how we can get those qualities and he's telling us bhakti yoga will help us with this and these virtues will help bhakti yoga why so it's a full nice big beautiful circle it helps us right very very dear to krishna just imagine that okay so quickly so sahajyas are basically who take krishna cheaply and say ah, i'm going to do my own bhakti thing i'm going to light an agarbatti today i'm going to climb some mountain some other day i'm going to go singing somewhere sahajyas i don't i don't believe in your philosophy i don't want to listen to your protocols your you know ye karo wo karo i don't want your regulations i am a sahajya i am a big bhakta and mayavadis on the other side are the ones who have philosophy they have scripture but they don't have devotion service they believe in the impersonal okay so you have the sahajyas on one side and you have mayavadis on the other side and who are we we are the vaishnavas we have both bhakti and we have philosophy again sorry philosophy is misspelled but we do bhakti because that is the conclusion of all shastras okay not due to whims and fancies we follow the guidelines given by scriptures and that is why vaishnavas are what we are vaishnavas that's what makes us special we don't want to decide create our own protocol and become bhaktas and not on the same side do we want to become mayavadis because through the bhagavad gita shila prabhupada talks about mayavad 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 so we have to stay away from being that we have the best of both worlds we have bhakti and we have philosophy and we put them together and we have acharyas lineage starting from krishna who have laid it all out for us made it so simple for us it allows people like me to speak and the reason i say it allows me to speak is that i i just i don't my talks are not intellectual or my not my talks are not so uh, shastric i just talk like a lay person you know i just talk about day to day i go to work i have children i just talk like that it allows me to speak because that is what shila prabhupad says take my message and pass it on take my message this is the conclusion of all the shastras you have the bhakti and you have the philosophy you have both and follow the guidelines given in the scriptures right that's all we have to do 
we don't need to create we don't need to think we need to follow now again we don't need to follow like sheep this is exactly what prabhupada says he's in he is he's allowing a person like me to speak because he's saying i'm going to take his words and i'm going to put it into perspective in this day and age living in bergen county knowing that there's going to be a thunderstorm starting this evening going all the way to tuesday morning that is what shila prabhupad wants us to do he wants us to preach he wants us to take the philosophy exactly the way it is and put our little spin on it and our little spin doesn't mean changing the philosophy our little spin is talking about hey it's going to snow tomorrow and this is what we can do with the same bhakti that we have okay that's how it is so and by following bhakti yoga and by practicing service unto the priest so now here this is what happens right su sukham kartum avyayam what happens when we follow this it is everlasting and it is joyfully performed any little thing we do goes into a clink into a krishna conscious bank account keeps collecting and collecting and collecting so the faster we want to collect our savings you know the faster we do our, our regulator principles and then do great stuff on ekadashi and on janmashtami we do extra plink 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 you know things keep adding up and it's never going to go away it's not that i've done my phd in this lifetime and zuk it's gone when i die and i have to start all over again start from elementary school again in my next life no this is su sukham kartum avyayam it is everlasting and it is joyful because when you start doing these services you see this a kind of a, a kind of a, a fountain of happiness you know it's just i don't know i'm i'm sure all of you have experienced it it's, it's just whoosh, it's like so fantastic that's how it is you'll feel that and of course shrimad bhagavata how many times shila prabhupad say this and i have to read this savai pumsam paro dharmo yato bhakti radhokshaje ahai tuki apratihata ya yatma suprasiddhi the supreme occupation dharma for all humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent lord such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self okay so here ahaituki causeless don't say i am going to do this because you do this it's okay to start off like that but eventually when you start reading it you'll realize that it's pointless asking krishna for anything he's already given us so much he's planted that seed of bhakti in us and it has to be apratihata unbroken okay unmotivated and uninterrupted that's how we naturally keep doing it and then if you are completely satisfied don't think that you know this is this is one of those things where uh the 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 taste of the pudding is in the eating you know you actually eat it and as you keep eating it you realize you you can feel it your bhakti grows your transcendence grows and you'll see how many of you started off by chanting one round of japa and how many of you are at 4 8 16 right all of us started with one round of japa and what is it that takes us to 16 it's the the satisfaction it's a complete satisfaction and it's in progress when we ask krishna he gives us a little tap go 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 two rounds four rounds that's how it starts it's so satisfying right of course there are days when like oh my god i have to do japa but then again we say oh japa is the only thing that makes me survive you know so it's 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 completely satisfies us and look at this look at this look at this look look at this expression on shri prabhupada's face completely satisfying and look at this look at the smiles on all these strange people who i have not seen for over one year now more than a year i think it's coming to look at all these beautiful smiling faces there we go so you see so how can we please krishna who is dear to krishna so we are all dear to krishna and we can get krishna will reciprocate with us the way we want him to reciprocate with us so we have to read the scriptures we have to find a guru or you know even attending classes listening to audio lectures or whatever we know that oh krishna wants us to do this oh krishna wants us to do that and when you do it you realize it's sublimely satisfying and that is what will keep us going you know there are people who fall off there's no doubt about it it's not that everyone who comes into his con becomes like a very happy chirpy devotee or whatever no some people come and it's it's not for them you know they drop off but they are very few and rare you know that 
And the thing is that the seed has been planted in them, right? So they will catch up with it in their next lifetime, maybe six months later, six years, six lifetimes later. The seed has been planted. But we are so lucky that we are here and we need to develop the seed. We need to water it by doing japa and then we need to fertilize the soil. And how do we fertilize the soil? By inculcating all these characteristics. And how do we inculcate it? By remembering certain things, remembering certain images, remembering certain situations. And by doing that, we will progress. We will become very, very dear to Krishna. That is the last verse of the Bhakti Yoga content in the Bhagavad Gita. Very, very dear to Krishna. So again, thank you very much. If you have any comments, oh, let's see, we got 20 chats over here. Let's look at some fantastic devotees over here. Oh, wow. Whoa. My experience has been every devotee I met in our temple were very helpful to me without doubt. Wow. Okay. I got Vipin Prabhu. Jay. Okay. So this is Ramchandra Prabhuji and Vipin Prabhuji. Now, every time I say this, maybe you can unmute and you, you can all say Hari Bol to all these people, right? Hari Bol to Ramchandra Prabhuji and Vipin Prabhuji. Hari Bol. Okay, now another one. Ram Prabhuji, Gopal Govind Prabhuji, Madhvi Sita Mataji, Jai Drapudi Machadji, Shali Mataji, Ram Tulsi Prabhu. Haribo. 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 Prabhuji is winning the ballot by the looks of it. Ram Prabhu and Madhvi Sita Mataji. Haribo. 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 Ashish Prabhu. Shiva and Prita Mataji. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Okay, here's another one. Madha Mridangam playing for Kirtan. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Then I got Madhvi Sita Mataji. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. And then of course I got everyone has some quality. Then I got Gopal Govind Prabhu and Mataji. Hari Bo. singing Hey, Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hey, Hari Bol. Someone actually voted for me, so my name also came up. Arundhati Mataji. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. Thank you Hari for whoever Hari. voted for me. <laughs> uh, then we got, okay, one, two more messages. Okay. Oh, I got some more. Audarya Gauranga Prabhuji, Madhvi Stuti Mataji, Rohan Prabhu. So inspiring, really, you know. Oh, okay. Rukmavati Mataji, Ramsharan Prabhu, Shivan Prita. Wow, now everyone is typing. But you realize we are not just typing names here because, you know, we are typing so that one doesn't feel bad. We are typing because all these devotees, the minute you think of something, you know, the minute you... Well, like, let's say, for instance, we are watching the deities, right? Okay. The altar looks so beautiful. And then immediately one devotee's name or face comes in your mind. The altar looks beautiful means immediately one person's name comes in. Someone is singing so nicely, immediately something comes in. There's one particular kind of kheer, you know, for Ekadashi, there's one halva. Immediately that Mataji's face comes to your mind, you know? So each of us has a little exceptional talent. And at the same time, we have so many other talents because we are all a part of this, this wonderful devotional Sangha that we get to that. So, you know, whatever traits we have, you know, Krishna has given each of us a talent. That is the service that we would like to do. We should become experts at that, you know, become experts at that, share that. Because when you're an expert and you share that, people also like to, to learn from you. That's your way of preaching. If you can make that one particular halwa, ekadashi, where everyone is like waiting to eat only that halwa for ekadashi, become an expert at that, share that knowledge, you know, that's your preaching. Not everyone has to, has to, has to give lectures or not. If preaching is when you're spreading Krishna consciousness, right? So giving that halwa, making those, those chocolate bombs and, you know, sharing that, that is preaching also. 
Okay, so that was uh, my time. Um, I, do we have questions, comments, anything? Please, I don't know if you're allowed to unmute and talk to me or not talk to me. However, that goes. Hi, Bo. <clears throat> so very nice presentation, power pack presentation. Um, <clears throat> we've been missing Mataji's talk. So she had been pushing me for a while. No, oh, finally we got her. So, <laughs> so <laughs> wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you so much, Mataji. And uh, we really missed you. And uh, um, <clears throat> love the talk, uh, revealing the secrets of Krishna telling himself what, who is uh, lovable for him, who is dear to him. And Mataji presented with so many nice, wonderful stories. Uh, devotees, I request you, if anyone has any questions, feel, please feel free and uh, get ready with that. Just give me a moment. I'll just take 30 seconds to make some few short announcements. And uh, just be here with me. Mother, I'll, I'll stop your screen share. I'll just switch to the other one. Is it okay? Oh, yes, yes. Please, please. I should stop sharing also. Okay. Okay, you can, you can stop it. That's fine. Okay, so <clears throat> the recap of the announcements. Um, <clears throat> so we next class will be uh, uh, on uh, Wednesday, um, 8.30 to 10. And uh, so you heard the Sishya today. Now you can think of what will be the double power pack when the Guru himself appears. And that's uh, um, His Grace Sankarshan Das Adhikari Prabhu. He will be coming up on Wednesday. Don't miss it. If you love this session, you will double love the session of Wednesday. Don't miss it. Okay. I can guarantee you, you will enjoy the session. And... Uh, <clears throat> And then continues in this series, what a wonderful series on Ekadasi, Sunday Ekadasi, His Holiness Loknath Maharaj will be giving us the blessings with the um, glorifications of the Pandirpur at 8 a.m. on Sunday, Sunday morning, 8 a.m. Don't miss it. His, his classes are wonderful. His songs are amazing, mesmerizing. You don't want to miss it. Please join it. And uh, just keep the site on your, somewhere on the bookmark that you visit it every day. What's coming up next today? That's your key. And uh, then another session coming up with, with uh, His Holiness Sundar Chaitanya Maharaj. We heard him when he was not sannyasi about a year back. A little bit more than that maybe. And now he is sannyasi. And um, now let's see, he's, he, he's, he's such a dedicated devotee. We'll hear him on Sunday evening around the same time next week on the same Zoom. Um, the community has been offering so many other programs. Take the part of that. One of the program is Sunday, uh, Thursday storytelling sessions at 8.30 to 9. That's kids storytelling session. And uh, this is one of the very uh, popular session among the kids. And uh, we do Bhakti Vriksha programs every Friday. And uh, those of you mm -hmm. missing or not enlisted in the Bhakti Bridge program, please email. There is an email listing over here that uh, Adar Gurang Prabhu has so nicely put up across. Get subscribed to get spiritualized. Just put your email here. You will be connected with one of the Bhakti Bridge programs. Okay. So along in the series of these so many offerings by the community, you also have opportunity for Bhagavad Gita reading every day on the weekdays, Monday to Friday, 12 to 12.15 at the same Zoom. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we have the um, all glorious daily chanting at 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, you can actually participate in this to lead this uh, Japa for 30 minutes. If you are interested, again, drop an email here with a little note what you want to do. Okay, so we can add you to the list and uh, or you can drop me message in this chat. We'll do our needful to add you in the group. 
with that a uh, little short another introduction as well because mataji gave the class i'm inspired with the book distribution and i would like to request our website has been re uh, programmed by other gurang prabhu now you can order the books on the site itself all the inventory is up to date you can pick the, pick the books with the category pricing category or the names you can search it just like google put the name the books will come in here if you have a book in mind which you are not able to get it on the site drop a email i'll try to get that book any bbt book we can send it to your uh, address uh, i request in this covid time a um, lot of services are not done in person so we are not able to distribute book in person but books are the basis and that is the way of success for our community and to please prabhupad so please take a moment if you need some books please order it here uh, there are so many new additions in this here especially um, the, um, the there are books like surrender unto me is a beautiful book and sri manasiksha very difficult to get it even um, uh, we are in nectar of devotion now goranga very beautiful book so so many nice beautiful titles are added here you can uh, subscribe it now we have additional time as well to read it at home so feel free to take that advantage thank you <clears throat> i'll go back sorry i took a little bit longer time go back to the questions i see uh, abhay um, go ahead with unmute and uh, uh, actually there was one uh, prabhu called uh, sorry uh, let me he raised his hand first abhay abhay wait wait sweetie shri ram prabhu i think ah shri ram prabhu shri ram prabhu yeah go ahead prabhu because okay. uh, that's my son you know this is the right directly is this better mother ji yeah that's better ah much better much better again gone voice yeah, call prabhu you type your question type your question. you can uh, log back in prabhu ji uh, yeah. you, you can go next uh, okay a bad word um i should probably uh i mean he was told you was asking a question i think he type it in because uh, we were having a hard time with the audio okay so mataji uh, that was a wonderful class how are you um, okay so good to see you you too mataji <laughs> i'm doing great um but yeah mataji i was just um um you know we just listening to your class i didn't come on video because i was busy doing something so i was just uh, listening and it was very very um it was very relatable in which you know um it was, this is this is a, this is like a very common question that came to my mind oh who does actually krishna how to actually uh, be noticed by krishna or what should we do to be noticed by krishna but um so that was a very nice class So my question was today was um I noticed that like even some time ago like if someone were to annoy me for a frequent amount of time I used to get agitated with them and I might say something very rash or very rude like Mataji you you, you gave a great example um uh, but like um even though I don't mean it even to a fellow devotee let's say even we've been it's been a long day and the uh, a fellow devotee just asks hey how are you doing and even though they have good intentions and we respond very rashly and at the end of, uh, after that we just think of ourselves oh my god what did i do 
So how do we prevent these type of, you know, behavior uh, toward like, you know, fellow devotees or to anyone for that matter, even though like, you know, uh, you gave an example, Madhuji. So if we could just recap on that a little bit, that'd be nice. Yeah. And I'm glad you asked that Abhay, because I used to have a massive problem with that, right? Because I, like I said, I can be sharp, you know, for no reason. So there, are, there were a couple of things, you know, that I began to notice. One is, like I told you, I took out that verse from seven, uh, chapter 17, austerity of speech. You know, it's a very beautiful verse. It tells you austerity of speech. And obviously, every day in the morning when I would log in, I would look at that and it would, it would sit in there, right? Then there are a couple of things which... Uh, uh, what I noticed, and I'm, and I'm also telling you this because I, I practice a little bit of a, a yoga and a little bit of Ayurveda and stuff like that, right? What happens sometimes is that there is something called pitta, which is called heat in the body, right? So a lot of people who are, 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 have pitta attributes tend to be sharp, you know, sharp with their temper, sharp with the way they speak and things like that. We have to watch what we eat so that, you know, we are watching, we are calm. The physicality also has to be calm, you know. So we have to make sure that we are not exhausted. We have eaten a little bit at the right time. We've eaten nice prasadam. And that also calms phys us physically. So one, one thing is that to be aware of this, the fact that you're even aware of it, the fact that you already know that you're speaking to your, your friends like that, or you're getting sharp and agitated. That is your first point toward healing, you know, toward being a better to being less snap. Um, you can maybe stick this little poster on your fridge, on your refrigerator, or wherever, you know, when you're driving to school or something like that, stick it up there. So you've read that in the morning. That's one of the big, bigger things. Be aware of the acidity in your stomach because when you're acidic, you know, either you've not eaten or you've eaten a lot of acidic food that also makes to keep you short-tempered and fiery and stuff like that. Drink nice calming teas, keep yourself hydrated. And the fourth main thing is that when you have spoken harshly to that person, make it a point to go back and apologize and say, hey, listen, you know, I don't know what I was thinking. You know, maybe I was in the middle of this sheet or whatever. I, I truly want to apologize to you for the way I have spoken. And when you do that, next time that same irritating person comes in front of you, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry to say that because when you're at work, there's one person who is bound to get your, you know, hackles up. You re you'll realize that you now you have a different relationship because you have apologized to that person and immediately when you do that oh no don't worry about it you know this that now you have broken that little barrier that you had and next time the person comes around they are smiling you're smiling they're like oh you know what i'll come back so they do that so definitely make a point to apologize and you don't have to feel humble you know because you've actually not been nice you know a sharp tongue cuts a lot of people, cuts places, you know, like uh, uh, sometimes uh, hitting a person who doesn't, a sharp tongue actually causes a lot of damage. So going up to that person and apologizing and saying, hey, you know, please forgive me for, for saying that I was irate, I was in the middle of something or whatever. Okay, Abhay? And you're such a sweet person. I can't believe that you say harsh words. <laughs> oh, I mean, it happened to me, Mataji. So, I mean, I mean, I mean, it has happened to me many times, not just once, twice, it happened to me many times. So then you uh, must apologize to them. Yeah. Try it and see it'll work out. Yes, thank you so much, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Jay Tropati Mataji, your hand was up. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. Jay Srila Prabhupada Mataji. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice topic. This topic is really, really uh, like one of my favorite. Well, uh, after reading in Bhagavad Gita a uh, reading section, uh, Mataji, I have a question. Uh, you were saying, don't try to see Krishna and act in such a way Krishna wants to see you. So can you please uh, elaborate a little bit this? Yeah. So this actually turned out to be when I was, you know, reading through the whole thing. This used to be what, uh, what uh, Sheila... Saraswati Thakur, who is Srila Prabhupada's Guru Maharaj, used to tell Srila Prabhupada. And every time Srila Prabhupada, like if you look at do Vanipedia or something like that, every time Srila Prabhupada would talk about it, he would say, my Guru Maharaj said that. My Guru Maharaj said, don't try to see Krishna, do act in such a way that Krishna sees you. That's how uh, Prabhupada used to say. So, so what happens is, Let's say, for instance, you know, you, you're working in your company, right? Now, we are devotees, so we do our stuff. We know that, uh, like, 
uh, this this job that Krishna has given us, right? In our constitutional position that we are in, this body that we are in, He has given us this particular job. We go to work. We do our stuff, and we work very diligently because that's what Krishna wants us to do. He wants us to work hard. He wants us to do the best. He wants us to be experts and skilled at what we do. But at the same time, he doesn't want us to expect, oh, because I'm so skilled, because I studied all this, now I should get a promotion, I should get a raise. No, that, that is not what we want. So what happens is when you are skilled at what you do and when you continue doing what you do and you do it really well, you'll start noticing that other people start noticing you. Okay, now let me give you one example. For instance, right? I have a few people who report into me, very sweet ladies or whatever the case is. But every year when we do their goals and objectives, right? I'm sitting and I'm scratching my head. I'm saying, kya kya yaar isne? Kya main iska likhu goals and objectives? That she did this, she did this. Ek to, you know, she disappears. Kahin na kahin, doctor ki appointment mein chali jati hai. Okay, whatever the case is. The other one, what is the, what is the good thing she did? Ah, she logs in every day at 7.30 in the morning. Okay, that is wonderful. I can't, it's like you have to think of what are these people doing? They're all there doing their jobs or whatever the case is. But when it comes down, immediately you notice that one person is over and beyond. Immediately. And then what happens is now I'm writing her goals and objectives. This new girl has joined us. I know she goes over and beyond. It's, it's right there. So now I'm putting the extra bonus for her. She, because I put her in the green. Now my boss notices it and goes up, up the ladder like that eventually, you know. And eventually it catches up. And then whoever's high up, they say, oh, when we have our next level of executive training, we're going to look at all the green lights and I'm going to pick this girl up and bring her on the highlight. So such a mundane example I gave you, right? Such a materialistic mundane example, but this is exactly what it happens to. Now, when we are doing Kirtan, right? We think sitting in the front. Now, again, this is not, I don't want anyone to get offended. I'm just giving an example. It doesn't mean that you should not do it. If you enjoy the Kirtan, like when I used to, when in, in Tobacco, especially when we used to have, you know, uh, Shai and Arti in the night, all the lights would be off and we would be sitting there because the deities look so beautiful in that particular light, you know, we would be sitting there. But there are sometimes we think by sitting over there, if I'm going to be sitting over there and I'm going to be clapping hard, then Krishna is going to look at me. But the issue is Krishna is not looking at you. Krishna may be looking at you, but the one who is sitting over there and just watching Krishna with that devotion or someone doing something, that person attracts Krishna more than the one who's standing there and saying, I am right here in front of me. I do so much service for you. I cooked all Sunday long and I did this, 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 and I'm exhausted and I'm standing here. So it is the consciousness. This is why is gone. Such a beautiful word. Every time I get a chance, I propound on the isk con, the consciousness. That is all this whole thing is about. It's not God consciousness, it's Krishna consciousness because he reads our heart, he lives in our heart, he knows exactly what we feel. So for us and trying to, and then of course, you know, there are, there are a lot of things which, um, so uh, like we say, oh no, no, I need to, I need to do Bhakti Vaibhav, I need to do Bhakti Shastri, I need to do this and I need to do that and I need to become a big preacher and I need to have a big thing or whatever the case is. But to what effect? What are you doing that for? Just because you want to be recognized by the rest of your devotee community that are ye kitna karti hai, re baap, re, iske paas che che, paanch paanch bache log hai, na khana banati hai, ye karti hai, wo karti hai. I mean, for what, you know? So if that makes us happy, if I, that makes us happy. But we must realize that that Krishna can already see that. And he's saying she's doing it for her own pride. She's not doing it to please me. You know, he can see that. Whether the other devotees can see that or no, we know it. Krishna knows it. It's that one-on-one -on -one relationship, which is the most amazing relationship that we have with Krishna. So it's our purity. And then what happens is even, so let's say, for instance, Krishna recognizes you or whatever. And then you, you know, deep down in your heart, you're like, oh, I want to, I want to be the best cook there is or whatever the case is. He will make sure that you become the best cook. He will do that because you're doing it not because you want to become famous, not because you want to have six bestsellers, not because you want to be an Instagram star, but he wants to do it because deep down you want to become a best chef because you want to please him. You want to make all this food for all these people. That is the relation, that one-on-one -on -one relationship with them. Because I'll tell you, the main thing that happens is, again, the word consciousness, right? When we hear about that whole um, 
rasa dance right when they're there in that in that rasa dance the minute the gopi said ah oh, krishna is only dancing with me in a minute he had gone he had disappeared so imagine if that is happening to the gopis and obviously that's an illustration for us what are we you know the minute the pride is such a scary thing the minute we get pride and now again we are living in this day and age kaliyuga we are bow we are going to get proud we are something you know we are going to be pleased when someone says how oh, kitna acha kaam kiya usne kitna acha ye kiya honor and dishonor we keep saying honor and dishonor we should be equipoised and it will come it will come because krishna is also helping us you know it will come but the minute we say oh my goodness i am so honored right now if we catch ourselves and if we say you know oh krishna i'm sorry you know actually help me to not feel like this that will also help us we are going to feel like that mata ji we are going to feel proud we are going to feel honor we are going to say oh krishna look i'm doing so much service for you remember we are all works in progress we are working 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 toward it you know i remember mata ji and i you know i had a, my friend from mumbai who and we've been friends for many 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 years we were talking the other day right and i think that somehow it was like so deep down in me i remember when i had first started uh, coming to the temple and stuff like that now again and like i'm telling abhay i can be very short tempered you know and i can have a snappy tongue i can just say things like that and i would still say that and people would be like are ye kya devotee hai re baba har sunday ko jaati hai krishna conscious mein but look at the way she's talking she gets angry at the drop of a hat so <laughs> it was i mean it was like this miserable for me you know when they did that and then slowly 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 i'm like i would explain to them listen i'm a work in progress i'm not a sanyasi just because i've started going to the iskon temple doesn't make me a sanyasi i'm not calm and serenity personified i'm not i'm a work in progress work with me i'm asking you to forgive me now because i have said sharp words to you so with practice it will come at the slowly 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 it will come and we keep you know like the sharp tongue for me i know it has been bothering me and that's why i took the extra effort to have that little cut out on my laptop every morning i look at it the sharp tongue bothers me some other trait of yours may bother you some other some other trait of yours because now you you're working so closely with krishna you know he'll also give you a hint that there is this particular trait which is not exactly working toward you becoming a better devotee you will make a cut out stick it on your fridge you'll put it somewhere else you'll put it on your windshield so that you you're working now now what what did i say practice makes perfect right we have to keep practicing and practicing and practicing that's what krishna said practice and detachment he uses the word himself practice he uses himself that will get us there. i hope that answered your question <laughs> yes mata ji thank you thank you mata ji and i will keep remember this uh, mama may priya may priya yeah. yes <laughs> so dear to krishna yeah very very dear to krishna mata ji very yeah, very dear. Yeah, very very dear to krishna yeah thank you thank you mama so ki mata ji hari bol rupati mata ji how are you hari krishna mata ji can you hear me yes yeah okay so thank you for the wonderful class mata ji so i have a question regarding this uh, verse uh, talks about you know tolerance so where to draw a line of tolerance you know like it, it's very difficult sometimes that uh, where do you la- draw a line that you know th- at this point of time i can tolerate till this some this much but you know but after some point it gets too much so <laughs> so could you please guide me on this yeah mata ji what a wonderful wonderful question you know what a wonderful question because really we think as krishna uh, as devotees you know we should just tolerate a bel mujhe mujhe laat mar you know that is it's not true at all we we think we could we have to do that we have to be humble and we have to be but when you read prabhupad's books he tell you you know you have to stand up for your rights you have to speak but again within the constraints of being a devotee within the constraints of speaking sweet words tolerance is really there's always this thin line mata ji so i'm telling you if it bothers you that means it's it's past your tolerance level already for you to bring that up that means there is something that is bothering you and that is beyond your your threshold of tolerance is beyond that think about it for a minute and say how am i going to address this issue how am i going to address this issue and you know when you think about it 
And obviously you don't want to think about it when you're doing Japa, but obviously it's going to come into your mind when you're doing Japa. And then you write about it and say, why is the situation bothering me? And then you'll see that you, you should not be tolerating some nonsense. You should not. And there's a nice way of not tolerating it. And there's a nice way as a devotee to say, I'm not going to take this anymore because I'm a spiritual person. I need to move on in my spirituality. And this is actually dragging me down. This kind of environment or this, this behavior that I'm allowing someone to just, you know, stamp over me and stuff like that. So it's an excellent question, Mataji, really. Because we, we think, oh, okay, as devotees, chalo, karne do, karne do. No, no. We should not. We have to, we have to focus on our spiritual growth. We have to. And what are we doing? By just watering it? By Shravanam Kirtanam is fine. But at the same time, we have to cultivate. We have to fertilize the soil. We have to develop these qualities. And yes, you tolerate. But do you tolerate something and you say, okay, chalo, okay. Someone, and I'm giving you a mundane example. In the past, when I was going to work, obviously, I was like always like struggling to get to work on time. And someone would cut my lane. I would be like furious. Now, that would be intolerance, right? But over time, when you say, okay, and then you realize, you know, it's actually my fault. What am I doing? Why am I getting so, I need to wake up five minutes earlier than I need to get to work on time. So uh, introspection then allows you also to, to be either tolerant or intolerant, you know, introspection. But the minute you bring this up, how much can we be tolerant? That particular situation is bothering you. It needs to be thought about and you need to intolerate it. You need to get it out of your, out of your way so that you grow. You, you're having weeds in your in your bhakti lata. Mm. Your krishna of bhakti is getting strangled with the so-called tolerance that we say, okay, we have to tolerate. I hope that answered your question, Mataji. Mm. Yeah, yes, Mataji. And another point, like, you know, it says about friends of all living entities. So sometimes there are situations when, you know, like even, even in that group of devotees where, you know, you don't get along because of the difference of opinions. And I would say the modes of material nature may act, but, you know, how, how can, you know, we cannot be friends to all the living entities. So like, you know, Krishna is, you know, expecting that kind of, uh, you know, taking that but, high position. <laughs> so No, but here, but, but that is again, you know, another very good question. But here, remember, let's remember something because the first thing that they teach you in, in the Bhagavatam is that that person is out there to give you a difficult time in life. Okay. Mm -hmm has been put there by Krishna to give you this difficult time in life. You're in that particular situation. Okay, you have to go through certain karmas in life. Mm. You have to go through certain hardships. Okay, who's going to do the hardships for you? Krishna is not going to come waste his time to, to do the hardship for you. So that devotee or that non-devotee, whoever that person is, everybody's a devotee, whoever that person is who's giving you a hard time is actually acting as an instrument of Krishna to give you a hard time, to make life miserable for you. So you have to, for instantly, you, you know, your perception of that person changes now. You're like, you know, this person is actually an instrument of Krishna. Mm. He's been put over there to give me a hard time. And I have to appreciate, he's just the messenger. This is my karma that's acting up. He's the messenger. He's doing what Krishna is asking him, giving me a hard time in life. So I have to say, Krishna, you've only given me this, this much hardship. I'm willing to take it. And Mataji, I'm telling you, it's so easy to speak, but with practice, it comes. It comes with practice. Every time you have someone who's giving you a hard time. Okay? This guy at work who would give me such a hard time. I'm like, do I seriously, do I need to speak to this human being ever again in my life? And I'm like, you know what? This guy has been put there in that particular job because Krishna wants him to give me a hard time. It's Krishna who's saying, okay, this is your quota of hardships. Oh. Krishna, give it a minute. Uh, maybe her internet got disrupted. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I think, uh, Shriram Prabhu, you had some question too. Uh, anybody else has any questions? Um, let us know so we know how many more questions we have. I want to um, bring in one verse uh, related to the question that Rukmavati asked about tolerance. 
very famous verse, Matras Pashas to Conte Ashutoshna Shukadukkada Agma Paino Nityas Tamtitikshasvabharata, in which Prabhupada translates that one must learn to tolerate. So that was, I, I won't go into details, Mataji is back. I'm but sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah. yeah. No, go ahead, Ramchandra Prabhu. Please expound no, no, on that. Just, because these are... I was just quoting the verse in Bhagavad Gita regarding tolerance. Matra Sparsha to Kante was that one must learn to tolerate in any situation and not be disturbed. So with practice, as Mataji said, that, you know, it, it's it's something that we have to. We have to, and we have to learn. And gradually it comes with practice, as she said. But, yeah. Okay. Dheeraj Prabhu is back. So Dheeraj Prabhu. Thank can... you so much, Mataji and Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Dheeraj Prabhu. Dheeraj, you can unmute yourself. Can't hear you. You need to unmute. Can you hear me now, Prabhuji? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, we can hear. Sorry you. about that, Prabhuji. Uh, yeah. The the question I had. The the, the question I had is uh, related to the picture Mataji was showing during the uh, presentation, and basically I had that question for a long time. So. The picture was related to the three modes of nature, which is controlling the um, everyone, every living entity. So, if the if we are control every moment, then where is the free will which is given by the Krishna to us? And and if if we have a free will, then why the three modes of nature is controlling us? Very nice, very nice question. Maybe this is. Very nice. So, Prabhu, basically, um, we are, we, I am in this particular body, in this particular time, place, and whatever, because of two things, right? One is because of my desires, and one is because of my past karma, however many years it's taken or whatever. So, the combination of that, the combination and the permutation, which only Krishna knows how it belongs. And so, I am in this particular um, body because of that. So, what happens is where I started my journey and where I'm going to end my journey are basically predetermined, right? And then within that, I have a certain amount of sattvaguna, rajas, and tamas based on, again, you know, my physicality, my constitutionality, everything that is that is there. So they that comes predetermined. But what happens is the one thing that we have in Bhagavad Gita, you know, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita has five chapters, have, have, has five big topics, right? It has um, the Paramatma, the Jiva, kar, ka, time, um, Prakriti, and uh, Karma, right? It has five things. Four things are standard. You can't do anything about it. There's one thing that you can change, and that is the Karma. Karma is the only thing that can change. And again, Karma will... Uh, your actions, everything after that will change. So we are predisposed. Like you'll see, it, some people have a predisposition toward tama, tamagun. So that is also like in Ayurveda, you know, they tell you that you the lot if you're a kapha person, you tend to have a lot more tamagun. But the thing is, you you can transcend that. So that picture says that you now let it because you and I are aware of it because we have read the Bhagavad Gita because we have seen that picture we know that that is what is happening right now but we also know that we can transcend that but for instance if you see a person who's like giving you grief at work or whatever and you're like oh my god this guy he's really tamagun he you know drinks all night and then he comes groggy to work he's reeking of alcohol or whatever and then you know that he's got a lot more tamagun in him. It allows you to determine and place the person and say, you know what, maybe I need more empathy towards this person. I need more sympathy towards this person because it's something that's dragging him down. Instead of saying, you drunkard, you're coming to work like this reeking of alcohol and stuff like that. No, because we have seen this beautiful picture. We says, okay, there's a lot more tamagun acting on this person. Maybe I need to bring him more prasadam cookies, which will help get rid of that tamagun and get a little bit more of the sattvagun in him. So, Again, a lot of people say, uh, you know, why when everything is predetermined? And I have this really nice story. Like this farmer, 
every every day the farmer goes and he does what he has to right he plows his land he puts in the seed and then he does clean stuff the weeds and everything and then what he has to do is he is waiting for the rain biggest problem waiting for the rain okay one year it doesn't rain so whatever grains he has in his warehouse he eats that and whatever the second thing is second year he does the same thing due diligence does everything that he does second year doesn't rain again now his the stock in his warehouse is getting lesser and lesser his neighbors are sharing the food you know the whole community is getting together and they're praying for the rain doing stuff like that third year he does his due diligence goes and does everything but third year he says you know what i'm not going to do my stuff because it didn't rain the last two years i'm not going to go and waste my time and energy doing that i'm going to just figure out some other thing i'm going to do whatever that year it rains so that year drains but now he's not done his due diligence he's not planted the seed so again there are no grains so there are two things that are happening over here right one is that you have to do your action you have to as a farmer you've decided to be a farmer that's what your your nature is be a farmer you have to do your work and you have to leave the results to krishna so the two years that it didn't rain krishna made sure that he protected him made sure that there was stock grains in the warehouse the community came together but that one year when it rained when he didn't do his due diligence when he was supposed to have that is the year that he's going to have a problem so you see we have to do our karma and and we have to we have to keep acting despite the fact that there are a lot of natural things have predestined or pre happening but we can change it with our karma so that doesn't mean that they're total puppets no that one little tiny spark that krishna can give us that little spark can flame us and inflame us and can take us from one place to another totally give us a different birth altogether the next year that one little piece of independence the minute we turn to krishna and we say okay i want to love you and i want to live by by you know your guidelines you turn that and you've basically changed everything in life you know the hands the lines on your hand you've changed your destiny you've changed I hope that helped, Prabhu. Yes, Madhuri. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madhuri. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. That's all for. Any other questions? Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Sorry. I just want to say, this was such a wonderful class. This each verse. of this chapter 12 can be taken into one session uh, yeah and you compile you compressed all of them into into one and and still not missing the 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 point the message behind it so that was really wonderful my question is around this is uh, the 16th verse 12.16 in translation Shri Prabhupada translates it it as my devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities. Can you please explain that? What he means by that? My devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities. What is the, the other thing on that? Can you read the full thing to me? But but also that's that's so perfect because this goes exactly in time with what dhiraj prabhu um, asked us right he said he's not we're not yeah there you go prabhu you see who is pure expert without care yeah see this is exactly like what we were speaking a minute ago right so we we are not just waiting for okay now i'm a devotee so i'm just going to go i'm a farmer i'm going to go and if it rains then i'm going to do the stuff and i'm going to eat the grains and i'm going to do that no so as a devotee we we just do what we have to do and then but the, the entire result is left to krishna we leave it to krishna and we say okay you if you want it to rain you want us to have so much more grain then i'm going to depend on you so it's not like oh rain god please rain today because if you don't rain today no the whole thing now depends on krishna so we are not living our regular lives and saying if i don't go to work tomorrow i'm not going to get a salary and then what am i going to do let me put my resume out on indeed or let me put my resume out here trying to no that's the ordinary way of looking at thing but we are when we read this verse now we are one level higher we are transcendental we say 
I am here. I have this job today. I need to go to work. I need to get my stuff done. And I need to be good at what I'm doing. Because this company is paying me a salary. It's covering my medical. I need to be good. I'm not going there and saying, oh, I'm a devotee, but I'm coming here. Because no, that's not an attitude. Whatever we do, anything that we're doing, you know, whether it's a, working for a company, whether it's a, a, any job, our job is very important to us. Krishna wants us to do our work and he wants us to do it very nicely. We should be skilled at what we do. But skilled and then say, okay, Krishna, this is what you want me to do. I'm good at what I'm doing because as a devotee, we are experts, right? Not experts at everything, but we're very talented. We're good at what we do because we put a heart into it because Krishna has put us in that place and given us that job. So we're good at it. But we don't depend on the normal course of everyday living like the other person does. I'm not going there to work and getting extra skillful because I'm hoping to become the manager of 30 people. I'm not looking for a promotion. I'm not looking for an extra pay rise. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm going there and I'm doing my work because Krishna wants me to do it. That is the difference between an ordinary person who depending on ordinary doing thing, I'm going to do it. Me, myself, my skills, I'm going to go there and versus a devotee who depends on Krishna for that. That's my understanding of it, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Mataji. I have a question. Then we'll try Hare, Hare, Hare. How good to see you, Shulba Mataji. Nice to see you. Thank you so much, Mataji. Very energetic lecture. Really good. I uh, learned a lot. Uh, I have uh, one question for you. I uh, like actually two questions. One realization I have from your lecture that, you know, you don't have to do anything to, you know, get uh, a kind of praise or highlighted from the, from anybody. You just have to focus on Krishna. Krishna, are you happy? Whatever I'm doing, are you happy with that? That's what, you know, my focus should be. And I'm going to follow that. Definitely. Uh, I have one question that, you know, how do we mind our own business? <laughs> <laughs> How to mind our own business. Mataji, but before I answer that, I like what you said, you know, when you said, am I making Krishna happy? If you listen to some of Urmila Mataji's lectures, that's yeah, it. She, Many of her lectures, she's saying, this thought should be predominant in our minds and everything else will come to that. Is Krishna happy? You know, and Rukma Mati, Mataji, to come back to you, you know, that whole intolerance thing, you're like, is Krishna happy? You know, the, ask yourself that question. Is Krishna happy? Is it okay for me to just, you know, be tolerant and be misused? Or then should I stand up? Because Krishna also wants us to be outspoken and, and you know, speak the truth and speak, speak it rightly. That Urmila Mataji's lecture, she'll keep saying that. Am I making Krishna happy? Is Krishna happy with me today? Is, is this action of mine going to make Krishna happy? If we keep that at the top of our minds, a lot of the other questions that we ask, you know, will fall into place. Now, how do I mind my own business? The, I, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is that if you are so busy doing stuff, we don't have time to monitor other people's business. You know, we are so busy. I'm like, oh God, God, I have to run to do this. I have to run to do that. You know, by the time the chapa is over, then you have to log into work and this and that and run to make prasadam and run to this. If we keep ourselves that way, that busy, we stay out of other people's businesses. Then the other thing about, that would be my first thought, how to keep out of other people's business. And the second thing is, even if I do want to get into other people's business, why don't I do it in a nice way? Because this is an association, right? We are learning from one another. I imbibe from that person. This person imbibes from me. So I don't think Krishna wants us to get involved and interfere in other people's businesses. But he wants us to be there again. So there's a difference. He wants us to associate so that uh, all that positive energy, you know, between each other is being shared and we share that. But really, the thing is, if you keep yourself busy, if you find time on your hands, think of something else that you can do for Krishna. Oh, this altar of mine today, maybe I need to change this, maybe I need to change that. How about me making different kinds of foods for Krishna? How about I decide on uh, watching a Kirtan program? Or how about I listen to another lecture, you know? It's the Zoom time right now. How about I spend more time doing that? So when you start doing that, you won't have time to bother. I hope that helps. <laughs> no, it really helped. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Hey, Krishna. So, <clears throat> anybody else has any questions? Okay. Looks like um, no other questions. Um, we're good. Yeah, looks like we're good. So, thank you so much, Mataji, our uh, humble obeisances. And uh, uh, thanks a lot for taking this um, session from your busy schedule. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure that we all are benefited and uh, we'll continue uh, in the same, uh, maybe another session like that. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Ramchandra Prabhu, thank you so much for dragging me into this because, you know, I've been pushing back. But somehow, I'm, I'm telling you, it was uh, so exhilarating, you know. Um, it was such an exhilarating experience to, to go through so many lectures, to read up on so much. It was such a wonderful experience. Like, you know, most speakers will say, and I'll be the first one to say that, I don't know about how much y'all learned or didn't learn, but in trying to come up with this, with a lecture for y'all, I am the one who benefited the most because I get to learn the most, you know. So again, thank you very much for this opportunity. Mataji, we are hoping to hear soon from you again. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I will. I will. Ram Sharan Prabhu, you want to say something? Actually, I wanted to say something. Can I? Yes. So, Mataji, Arundhati Mataji, I was thinking that you should start a mentoring program for all the <laughs> upcoming speakers. We could learn a lot from you. <laughs> I'll be happy, please. Anytime, so, maybe we can do that. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll connect with you offline. Yes, yes, absolutely, Mataji. Absolutely. Let's do that. Wonderful class. Very energetic. And each and every point was, um, everything was um, coherent. Like everything was put together. Everything was flowing. Like I'm remembering a lot of points. Uh, I don't have any questions, but really very well presented as usual, as usual. Thank you Thank so you, much. Thank you, Thank <laughs> you. You're very kind. <laughs> you are very kind. Thank you very much, Mataji. I just... Uh... Prabhu asked, I mean, I was just feeling it's such a very energetic, passionate, and then we're looking forward to hear from you again and again. Thank you, Ramcharan Prabhu. Thank you very much. Okay. So it looks like Mataji is coming to the end now. So we'd like to uh, uh, take the permission from all the devotees and uh, um, for conclusion of the today's session, remember to uh, look for the events at iskonabargan.org and uh, so many events coming forward, Wednesday, Bhakti Viksha, and Thursday storytelling and next Sunday program. And uh, more importantly, Kadasi, Sunday Kadasi morning program, eight o'clock call by His Holiness um, Loknath Maharaj. So <clears throat> with that, um, like to Pray Vancha Kalpa Tarubasha Kripa Sindhu Kripa Sindhu Gyai Vacha Patita Nam Pavati Vyu Vaishnavi Vyu Namo Namaha Anantakoti Vaishnavi Vyu Jai